Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'll give a few minutes for people to join and come in. Um, thank you all for being here. Okay, my name is Moira Swanson. I am with Conservation Nebraska as an AmeriCorps member, and this is my third year serving as an AmeriCorps member. Today I'm with Dr. Shannon Bartlett Hunt, who is here to talk about the citizen science water testing and what they do and how you can be involved, different things like that. Um, we will have time for questions and answers at the end. So please use the Q&A function to ask any questions that you have, and we will answer those at the end. Great. Thanks so much, Myra. Um, so wanted to just say thanks to everyone for joining. I see a couple more people still coming into the room. Um, did also just want to say that please feel free to put questions in the chat. Um, as we go along, I'll try to kind of keep an eye on those. Um, I would definitely like to answer questions. Um, and I think we'll have plenty of time for questions. So if you do have things that come into your mind, please, please feel free to ask. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So hopefully now you're seeing my PowerPoint. And so today our topic is focused on uh, what's in your water. So we're going to talk primarily around nutrients and water quality. Um, in the state of Nebraska. Um, and so first of all, just talking a little bit about nutrients. Um, so we know that we live in a state that is primarily agricultural. And so to grow crops, we apply a lot of fertilizers as well as we have a lot of animals. And when we um, have the level of animal production we do in Nebraska, then there's a lot of animal manure. And oftentimes that manure is also applied to land uh, because it contains nutrients such as nitrate and phosphate. And those are used in um, plant growth. So we need some nitrate and phosphate for plants. Um, however, when we land apply excess fertilizer or manure, or when we apply fertilizer or manure at times of the year when it's more likely not to enter into the soil, such as in the winter, it can wash off of the soil um, and move toward surface water during rain events, or if it does go down into the soil, um, some of it cannot get used when it kind of leaches into the root zone and then it can push deeper into the soil. And then it ends up migrating down toward our groundwater table. So this figure that you see of the United States on the um, right-hand side just shows the nitrogen flux in watersheds. And so um, the darker color just means more uh, nitrogen that's moving through these watersheds. And you can kind of see Nebraska um, is in kind of the center here in this very, very dark region where we have a lot of nitrogen um, within our watersheds. And so we know, of course, that we need good water quality for public health, for environmental health, and so uh, we're very interested in the levels of nutrients present in our water supplies. So how do nutrients enter water? Um, so nitrate and phosphate, these two primary compounds that we're interested in, again, are present in chemical fertilizers and manure. Um, when it rains, these excess nutrients can run off into streams, lakes, and ponds. Uh, the rain can also carry nutrients down into the soil and then continue down into groundwater. And this figure just shows all the potential sources for um, nitrate that we might expect to see in the environment. Um, and it's important to note that while agriculture is one source of nutrients, we also have urban sources for nutrients. Uh, we can have runoff from application of fertilizers 
on lawns and in parks. Um, we can also have uh, industrial um, inputs, uh, treatment plants where our wastewater is treated can be a source of nutrients to water. Um, we can have atmospheric um, deposition of nutrients. And then you can also see that once the nutrients are present in the water body in this stream, you can see they can be taken up into plants, they can be settled into sediment, they can be buried. Um, so there's just a lot of cycling of these nutrients that can occur. Um, this also shows that downward migration of, of nutrients into the soil and then further down into our aquifers. So we know that our public health is very dependent on um, our environment. And so over 15 million households in the United States rely on wells for their drinking water. Uh, we know that about 20% of wells contain at least one contaminant of, at levels that might be above um, the maximum contaminant limit, limit set by EPA for health concerns. Um, this is, a, again, another figure from a uh, research study just showing in uh, yellow, or sorry, the green and yellow means low uh, risk of groundwater contamination by nitrate. The orange and red are higher areas uh, where we have high nitrogen inputs and potential for high, um, higher vulnerability of our aquifers. And you can see, you know, Nebraska has a large, large area that's red, meaning that there's potential for lots of nitrogen being used and aquifers where we have potential for nitrate to impact our drinking water supplies. Um, and so this is something that's really important for our state. Um, for those of you that may use or have a private well that you use as a water supply, definitely testing is recommended, yearly testing. Uh, from a certified lab. And if you have questions about that, that would be something I'd be happy to answer uh, during the Q&A. So please just put those questions into the chat. So when we look more at the state of Nebraska, um, these this is a figure showing nitrogen concentrations by township across the state. So that's why it kind of looks um, pixelated because each township has a concentration that's measured here. A few things, if you look at this color chart, the, the more yellow, orange to purple um, squares are higher uh, nitrate concentrations. 10 milligrams per liter is the drinking water standard. So anything above 10 milligrams per liter would be determined to be unsafe to drink by um, the EPA. And so all of these squares here in kind of Eastern and South Central Nebraska where you see purple, yellow, and orange, those are really all very close to or exceeding the drinking water standard. Uh, the other thing you might notice here is there's lots of gray uh, boxes. And those gray squares represent areas where there's no information about the nitrate concentration in groundwater. And so while we do have some really good information, we don't know um, what the impact of nitrate is on our groundwater across the entire state of Nebraska. Um, great, so I just, I'm gonna monitor the chat. So Anne just asked a question, what are the acceptable levels of nitrate, nitrate and phosphate in well water? So the drinking water standard for nitrate is 10 milligrams per liter or 10 parts per million. Nitrite is one milligram per liter or one part per million. And phosphate does not have a health-based uh, drinking water standard. The issue with phosphate is more of an environmental um, issue than a health issue. So there's not a specific standard set by EPA, um, but excess phosphate can cause algae to bloom. And then that algae can cause the dissolved oxygen that's present in surface water to be consumed and lead to um, uh, just kind of water that's not um, healthy for organisms to live in. So hopefully that answers your question, Anne. So talk today a little bit about our citizen science program and I will definitely invite you all to participate in this program. Uh, we're running a session now and then also we'll be recruiting for September. We'll be sending out more test kits in September. 
So we started this program in 2018, and the goal was really to measure nitrate concentrations in private wells and surface water across the eastern part of Nebraska. Since then, we've really expanded this to be statewide. So if you're calling in today from somewhere other than the eastern part of the state, that is great. We would love to have your participation in this program. We've recruited over the years hundreds of people across the state of Nebraska who measure surface and groundwater quality um, once or twice a year. And we do provide training. So we do the training in person um, through events like this Conservation Nebraska event and other organizations. And we also have YouTube videos on our website. And if you want to write down our website, it's go.unl.edu slash WQCS. That will take you to our main page where you can see those training videos and also sign up um, to receive some water quality testing kits. So how do we do this testing? Um, we use test strips. So these are very straightforward and simple. Um, you might have used something similar if you've ever tested water in a pool or used a pH paper. So there's one strip for nitrate and nitrate, uh, which has two pads. So these are so such simple tests to do. First, you have to collect your water sample. Um, I didn't talk a lot about that, but if you're collecting uh, water, if you have a well and you're collecting water from your well, from your faucet, you might wanna let that faucet run um, for about five minutes before you collect the water sample, just to make sure that you're letting any of the water that's been sitting in the pipes kind of flush out of the system before you collect your water sample. Also, if you're um, interested in the water that you're drinking, you know, you wanna measure what's coming out of the tap. Um, if you're interested in the environment, you know, prior to treatment, we do have some people that wanna collect prior to any kind of in-home treatment just to see what's coming in uh, to their treatment system. So these tests are very simple. You submerge the strip in the water sample that you've collected for about one second. You hold it flat for 60 seconds. And then it was, it's a color metric test. So these pads will change color. And then those pads, you can read the top pad is nitrite. You can read and match the color to its closest um, comparator in this color strip. And then the same thing for nitrate the pad will change color and then you can match it to a concentration um, on this color strip. So it's very simple. Uh, you get your data immediately after you collect this test. So you collect your water, you dip your strip and in 60 seconds, you will have information about your water sample. Same, similar for phosphate, submerge the strip for about five seconds, hold it flat for 45 seconds, and then same thing again compare the color to the colors across um, this phosphate strip. So here's just a little bit of data um, from some of the past that we've collected across Eastern Nebraska. So just showing across 2019 and 2018. Um, so kind of looking at that total column, these are um, groundwater samples. So just showing for people who are um, testing their wells, and each one of these dots represent a water sample, we had about um, half, just under half the wells testing with no, essentially no nitrate, less than two parts per uh, million nitrate. But the yellow and orange represent wells that were did have nitrate present below the drinking water standard. So that yellow is two parts per million and orange is five parts per million. But then really the red and dark red represent wells where the nitrate was actually exceeding the drinking water standard. And that ended up to be about 20% of the wells. And that's actually pretty consistent with what other national studies find and with what the state of Nebraska also finds that about 20% of private wells do have nitrate that exceeds the drinking water standard. So again, if you have a private well, um, it's definitely recommended that you test your well for nitrate. Um, we feel that this program is kind of a good screening tool. Uh, you can participate in this program at no cost, receive this test kit. If you do find that you're testing positive, um, even if it would be at a lower percentage, like five um, parts per million, um, I would say follow up with a lab test, but at least can give you some information to let you know if you should send your water sample to a certified lab. 
Uh, we've also, if you don't have a well, if you live on a municipal system, I will say uh, municipalities do test their water supply for nitrate and many, many other contaminants. Um, so we're not concerned about nitrate or nutrients in municipal systems, um, but you can still participate in this program by measuring nitrate in surface water. Um, so we're happy to send test kits to individuals who would like to test maybe a stream, a pond, a river, uh, some water body nearby where they live. And so again, you can see if you kind of look at that total column, you know, we were finding uh, excess nitrate again in about 30% of the surface waters that we were measuring um, across the state. And since this time, we've collected even more data and it still holds, you know, that we will find uh, excess nitrate in the surface waters. This can be a concern because if people are uh, recreating in the water, swimming in the water, uh, they're going to be exposed to nitrate at levels that if they're, you know, accidentally ingesting some of that water, it may not be entirely safe for them to drink. And then phosphate, again, there's not a health-based um, standard for phosphate, but again, we do find phosphate present in our surface water. And again, phosphate can lead to some of these issues with algae um, that just makes water unpleasant. Um, and also some of those algae can be toxic, so they can release um, toxic compounds and, the, and if animals uh, drink that water, sometimes that's resulted in those animals getting sick or dying. Um, and so this is just something we wanna also get more information on. So there was a question on from Marsha on the chat, how to get a test kit. I'll um, go back to that, but just to reiterate, you can go to, this website right here, go.unl.edu slash WQCS. And there is a button where you can click to sign up to receive a testing kit. And our next round of testing kits will go out um, in August. So what have we learned from citizen science? Um, <clears throat> what we've learned so far is about 20% of the wells that we've tested um, exceeded the drinking water standard for nitrate, and over 50% of the wells had nitrate concentrations greater than two milligrams per liter. That's important because there's some studies that show nitrate can have an effect on certain populations like children or people who might be um, pregnant or immune compromised. And so really, um, even though the drinking water standard is 10, uh, I think people should be aware if their water does have nitrate, especially if they have um, you know, individuals in those populations who might be drinking that water on a really consistent basis. So we just want to raise awareness about nitrate. And many people, um, because there's not an, it's a on the homeowner to test their water. It's not something that often comes into people's minds. It can be confusing or people don't know where to send their water sample or what tests to have done. And so this is kind of a simple program that allows you to do some initial testing at no cost. So again, we're recruiting for a testing window coming up in September. Um, we'd love to have everyone's participation. Um, and we also collect the data. So when I get done with these slides, I'll show you our website and show you the map that has um, more data. And so there's kind of two components to this. We want individuals to have their own information, but we would also like people to um, send in their results so that we can show those data um, on our map. I will say if you're testing at your home, we do not um, uh, provide that information in terms of the exact location of the testing. The, the, our base map is kind of blurred out, so you can't see the exact location, but you can see the county um, that the test was conducted in. And so this just allows us to get a better snapshot of water quality across the state of Nebraska. So, oopsie. Hold on, I think I had one more slide. Oh yeah, just wanna really quickly thank all the organizations who have been a part of this and some of the funding. I wanna say lately, um, we've had some good partnerships with NRDs um, who have provided test kits to uh, residents in that live within their NRD. Also have had this great partnership with Conservation Nebraska. 
And then the other thing I wanted to show was just to show this website. Um, okay, so I think now, yeah, hopefully now you're seeing the website. So there's some background information, but if you come down here, sign up for testing, this is the button you would click. Um, if you wanna sign up, we just need your mailing address, how many sampling kits you need, et cetera. Um, oopsie, sorry, gotta navigate back to the site. Then um, this is a site where once you've conducted your test at home, um, you have your information immediately, but we would love for you to share your data back because we have built this dashboard that you can play around with that shows all of the data that we've collected across the state of Nebraska. So we have surface water and well water. Um, you can see what these um, legend means. The purple dots are surface water, the orange dots are well water, and then the size of the dot just corresponds to the concentration um, of nitrate that was measured at that particular location. So you can see, even though we started in Eastern Nebraska, we have participants from all across the state and you can zoom in on an individual county. Um, and what's kind of neat is that these maps then on the right-hand side, which just show trends and concentration, those change to reflect the data that you're looking at. So you can zoom in on a particular location. Um, and so what we really wanna do is just provide this information for people so they can be more aware about water quality in different areas across the state um, and hopefully contribute to, if you live in one of these counties where we don't have a lot of information, it would be great to partner with you to start to collect some more information from, from those locations. So that's really wanted, what I wanted to present, but I am more than happy to answer any questions um, about water quality, about nutrients or um, you know, just other things related to your water. Thank you so much, Shannon, for presenting. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to be here with us today. Yeah. It's really awesome to learn more about what you guys do throughout the years. Um, real quick before, if you do have any questions, drop those in the Q&A for Shannon to answer. And I'm going to launch a poll really quick. It's only about four questions long. This is how we maintain funding for events like this. So please answer. Um, it takes probably about 30 seconds to answer the questions. So I would appreciate your response. Um, I'm not seeing any questions so far. Um, oh, here comes one. Do you have any information on lead in water? Yeah, so I think lead is also a really important uh, question. Unfortunately, there isn't a test strip on, uh, or the same type of test that we're using for nutrients. We don't have that same type of test for lead. Um, lead is definitely an issue related primarily to uh, having lead service lines in the home. And so if you have an older home or a home that has lead pipes or service lines uh, leading into the home, that's generally how lead um, enters water. It's very important if that is the case that you do have your water tested. Um, I think some municipalities may also have some programs to try to help homeowners replace those lead service lines because um, the issue with lead is just it's a very um, dangerous neurotoxin, can have developmental impacts on children. So we definitely want to avoid um, drinking water that might contain lead. Um, next question is, if you collect surface water, how's the location determined? You know, that's really up to the individual who um, tests the water. We certainly recommend, first of all, if you are gonna collect surface water, that you do it in a location where you can safely collect the water. Uh, we definitely recommend just collecting some water from the side of the bank and not wading into the surface water unless it's you know, a water body you're really familiar with. And also definitely always recommend having a partner with you when you're out near water, wearing a life jacket, just doing basic water safety, of course. Um, but you can collect a water sample from the side. You can just dip a container. You don't need much water into the side um, from the bank. You could do that test right on the side of the bank, or you could take the water back to your home, uh, whatever might work best, but it's really just up to the homeowner. And then um, what we typically ask people to do is just drop a pin 
take your cell phone, go to a map app and just drop a pin and collect the latitude and longitude um, so that we can map that on our map. And we give you instructions on how to do that. Um, so if you're if you can send that data in, you can just send that latitude and longitude along with that sample. Um, next question, how does well depth correlate to nitrate? That's a really great question. Um, a lot of times we see um, nitrate more present in shallower depths. And that's just because you know it takes longer for the nitrate to push down into those deeper aquifers. Also, sometimes those deeper aquifers have a um, layer, you know, a, a clay layer, an impermeable layer on the top. And so that can prevent nitrate from entering. Uh, sometimes we can see nitrate contamination around um, wellheads or at re recharge zones, but typically deeper wells will have less. Uh, less impact from nitrate. Um, Anne's question about water testing at five for nitrate and 30 for phosphate, you know, is should, should that be a concern? Uh, five is definitely below the drinking water standard of 10 parts per million. I will say that if you used our program, these tests are quantitative, but I sometimes think of them as semi-quantitative in that um, you know, sometimes it's difficult to distinguish exactly that color between five and 10 or two and five. Um, so to be safe, it would be good to have your water tested at a contract lab for nitrate, just to confirm that you're below that drinking water standard. Um, or if you want to um, take the steps to install some home treatment, phosphate, again, is not a health-based concern. It's just more of a environmental concern so that it's really more than nitrate that you might want to follow up with with a um, confirmed laboratory test. You can find there's information on Nebraska Extension about uh, which contract labs or that might be near you, or you can also follow up with an email to me and I'll be happy to put you in touch with some folks at UNL Extension that could help you with figuring out where to send a water sample for further testing. Um, the next question from Lasonia about pollution from um, air or the airport. Um, yeah, I think, you know, that there's, you know, potentially many different sources of contaminants in, um, in the environment. There's, I don't think any immediate concerns that come into my mind just from the airport per se. Um, obviously when we have roadways, um, taxiways, we have things like oil and gas, et cetera, that can leach into our water or run off into surface water. Um, within the city, I will say that the water that we're drinking is treated and tested on a very regular basis. So don't have concerns about the quality of water that you're drinking, um, but you can also still participate in this program, um, help us measure water quality around the area where you live. Um, area, a question from Sarah about our other organizations using the data and are we identifying any trends? Yeah, so we're wanting to get the data out there for other organizations to use. That's why we have the data visualization and the data map. Um, definitely have had some school groups use the data. Um, want to make it available for whoever is interested to see. Um, we're kind of seeing, obviously, things that are consistent with what we see from other monitoring programs. Um, again, surface uh, water contamination in locations where we have, um, you know, more extensive agricultural production and also um, that groundwater, you know, seeing about 20% of those wells exceeding the drinking water standard is pretty consistent with other, um, other studies. The next question was about chlorine, bromine, and fluoride in water. Um, yeah, so this is an area that's a little more outside my expertise, unfortunately. So I don't know that I'll be able to answer that um, completely. I will say that chlorine and bromine, bromine, um, bromine is not added in Omaha per se, but chloride, um, sorry, or chlorine is often added to water treatment as a disinfectant. Um, it does, it is, um, present at levels to provide a residual, um, but there can be concerns about what are called disinfection byproducts, which can occur 
um, in waters, especially waters that have a lot of organic material in them. Um, but that is something that is monitored. The levels of disinfection byproducts are monitored in uh, drinking water uh, because those have been identified to, to cause health impacts. Um, Valerie's question, if they irrigate around me, am I more likely to see higher levels in my well water? Um, potentially, there's a lot of factors that can affect nitrate concentrations. It's gonna be a function of the soils in your area, um, how much is taken up by plants, how much is applied. But in general, if there's more irrigation or more rain, that can push, if there is any excess nitrate, that can push that down uh, into the surface to have more potential impact on water quality. But again, there's many factors that can affect um, that nitrate migration, including the types of soils, um, how much is applied, et cetera. And I think we have two in the chat. Um, someone said, do you have information on how wind turbine affects wells? Will drought make those effects worse? Yeah, you know, I don't necessarily know um, if I know any direct relationship between wind turbines and wells. Um, you know, those wind turbines are, are created in kind of a small footprint, often in um, agricultural fields. I don't know that there is a direct correlation to wells or well quality. Um, drought um, can have different impacts on water quality uh, with respect to surface water. And it's, it's not just a straightforward relationship. Drought can eliminate you know, runoff and rain, which will you know, stop contaminants from migrating. But then those contaminants can also sometimes build up on the surface um, and then when it does rain, sometimes too, we're getting more flashy rains, more high intensity rains. And so that could maybe push those contaminants further into soil or push them into surface water. Um, and so again, it's not a, not a straightforward, um, straightforward, um, relationship. And then another question from Anne, how do I register my house? Well, um, I think that is if, and if you could send me an email, I will put my email in the chat. I'd like to connect you with someone from Nebraska Extension who I think could assist you with that. Um, and then if you're just talking about this particular program, you can sign up to receive a testing kit um, anytime and we'll be sending those out in August. Okay, um, I'm trying to see, and if you can let us know if you can see her email, because sometimes it doesn't go through when we put it in the chat. Um, and then if everyone can take a moment to answer the poll really quick, we have just a couple people that still need response we need responses from that would be great. This is again, how we maintain funding for events like this. And with that, I'd just like to say again, thank you, Shannon, for being with us today. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day and everyone else for being here today. I'm really happy we could all get together today and make this all happen. Um, I think I learned a lot from this and I hope everybody else here did too today. Great. Thanks so much. And yeah, uh, feel free with follow-up questions to uh, send me a follow-up email. Okay. Thank you guys. If you want to see this again, you can go on our YouTube channel. It'll be posted in a couple of weeks and yeah, you can watch it there. We'll also have events posted on our Facebook page as well. Thank you guys. Awesome. Bye-bye. Have a great night.